of the universe, of the celestial objects that hardly we have seen in the past. And that is the reason a lot of interest has been generated in this particular field of studies and research globally, not only in India or Kolkata. The night sky. Thousands of years back when our ancestors used to go to the night sky, they used to wonder what is night sky, where is the where, where are the stars? What are they? Is there any connection with the sun with the stars of the earth? With these set of questions and queries, the subject of astronomy was born. So astronomy can be considered as one of the oldest subjects that human minds have touched upon. At the same time, given the huge number of news items that you regularly get to see in television channels and newspapers, you get an idea that it is also one of the most happening subjects in the recent times. Astronomy is a subject as a power it can tell us what was the physical situation, say for example in this region, millions of years back. At the same time, it can give us a hint what can be the situation in this region millions of years later. So spanning a vast expanse of space and time, the subject that gives is astronomy. And scientists all over the world are realizing that soon, astronomy will be considered as one of the mother subject of science faculties and research and academics. Just to give you an idea that I'm not just telling a lie. 1901 to 2000, in 100 years, only three and a half Nobel Prizes were given in astronomy, astrophysics, cosmology, and general theory of relativity. Whereas, from 2020 to 2022, I would not have anything. Six Nobel Prizes, 17 Nobel laureates were awarded this prize in these subject areas. Throughout the world, in the last two, three decades, as if a revolution has happened, Developing, underdeveloped, fully developed. Every country is desperately trying to build bigger and bigger telescopes, newer and newer observatory. In this very inhospitable terrain of the coldest desert in the world, the Atacama Desert, the place called Mount Ranal, they have built these four telescopes, each 8 meter in diameter, 24 feet in diameter. The region is so inhospitable for 25,000 square kilometers, not even a single blade of grass can grow. One of the small islands of the Hawaiian archipelago called Mauna Kea. On top of Mauna Kea, 15 countries have built a telescope. The smallest one cost is 500 million dollars. So that tells you what a gigantic amount of effort in terms of manpower, resources, money, everything is being spent to understand the sky. But as an Indian, you should be happy and proud that the largest telescope that has been planned, which is probably going to get commissioned by 2026 or 27, TNT, 30 meter telescope. A telescope with a 30 meter, 100 feet mirror diameter. The cost of building this telescope is so huge, not a single country is able to build it. Five countries are collaborating. USA, Canada, China, Japan, and India. In 2018, the Prime Minister declared in the Lok Sabha, the Indian contribution for building this telescope will be 1700 crore rupees for one instrument in India. And that tells you, whatever you hear, read, listen about what is happening to our country in terms of science and technology and modern science, there is a parallel India which is actually progressing very fast. Not only in the white light, in this light, which is visible light, in radio wavelength, the universe can be seen. And just to give you an idea, one of the big telescopes, 100 meter diameter, in a place called Effelsberg in Germany, they have this radio telescope. 100 meter, you have a 100 meter rest, and this is 100 meter. But you'll be amazed to know, the largest radio telescope system at present operating, do you know it is where? 90 kilometers from Pune, in a place called Naranga, they have this giant meter wave radio telescope, which is 45 meter diameter antenna, 30 of them. 25 square kilometer area is the area of the radio telescope. So that tells you India is happening. Whatever you hear from others. Night sky. Thousands of years back, our ancestors used to look to the night sky and used to wonder what is the meaning behind those lighted dots, but they couldn't find an answer. In their discretion, what they did, they chose different 
parts of the portions of the sky, identify closely space stars, join those stars to straight line and create imaginary figures. In this way, the whole sky was divided into eight regions, each region being governed by an imaginary figure, which we today call constellations of Taramanda. You may be asking that these are all imaginary, why should we know their names or their genetic positions? That's a big deal, it's imagination. If you ask me, I will say still they have not lost their physical relevance. Just to share with you a private experience, for the last 20 22 years I've been in Kolkata, quite a number of years I had to go down to the South India in a place called Belgaum or Tindiga. These two places of the Indian Army is advanced commander training school. Each year, for six times, I have to teach the fresh batch of army commanders how to read the night sky. Because if you can read the night sky properly, without a lot of sophisticated instrument, you can get a lot of information on your A small example. Suppose a batch of you has gone for a hitchhiking trip, night has happened, moon is not there in the sky, you have lost your way. Suppose somebody told you in the morning, that if you go in the southern direction, there is a locality. Oops. Sir, <laughs> tell I think, is it, is it because of some power problem or something? You just heat up with the sky, you heat up with a single star, and that star is the whole star. The moment you take it on the whole star, you know which is not star. So even today, these sort of imaginary signs and signatures do play an important role. Now in your kindergarten days probably, you have all learned that Earth is going around the sun, around an axis, and it goes around itself once in 24 hours and on another axis and these two axes are not parallel. They are inclined at an angle of 23 and degrees. But a lot of our teachers have tried to tell us just because they are inclined and not parallel, you people are sitting here and I am standing here, 780 crore people and 7.8 billion people and billions of life exist on the surface of the earth. I will come to that. But let us go a little deeper. We all know that earth is going around the sun once in 365.25 but what appears to us, it appears to us as if sun is going round the earth once in one. Why? Suppose, suppose this microphone is the sun and the I'm going down to the position. Since the sky to me is just a two-dimensional surface, along my line of sight, I will see the sun on this part of the sky. After a month that day I'll come here, sun will appear here. After three months, sun will appear here, and after six months, sun will appear. So you see, I am going round, but it appears to me as if the sun is going round me once in one complete year. This apparent path of the sun on the sky is called the ecliptic. In Bengali, it is called Kranti Rekha or Kranti Vala. Look like of eclipses. Now, I also told you that if you take the equator of that, in your mind, produce it under the sky. So on the sky, you will create an imaginary great circle. Let us call it celestial equator. Now, since these two axes are tilted with one another, these, these two imaginary planes, the blue colored celestial equator and plane, and the yellow colored ecliptic plane, they will intersect each other along a straight line. And the end points of this straight line is important. This first end point is called the point of vernal equinox. The word equinox comes from Latin, it means equal nights. 22nd or 23rd of March, sun appears at this point. That date is exact equal amount of daytime and nighttime for everybody on earth. March, April, May, 21st or 22nd of June, sun appears at this point. That day for the northern hemisphere people, it is the longest day and the shortest night. 22nd September, sun goes to the other point, extreme point, equal amount of daytime and nighttime. And 21st or 22nd of December, sun comes at this point. That day for the northern hemisphere people is the shortest day, the longest time. So this continuous change of daytime and nighttime occurs just because of this period, accidental period of 23 and a half degrees. I'm sorry, you should excuse me. I'm, I'm going a little bit away from the science. Thousands of years back, our ancestors realized that the sun, apparently as it was going through the on the sky around the earth, apparently, boxes. 12 of the 88 months of Thus, in a calendar, 12 months a year, 12 constellations as in 2004. As a result, what happened? Suppose somebody of you were born, say in part of June. The moment you were born at the end part of the June, they would put a stamp on you that you are a Cancerian. Your sunshine or zodiac sign is Cancer. And the moment they do that, 
nowadays we have 105 television channels at our home. Six to seven channels we regularly get to see these people. Every newspaper to columns and every magazine to pages. They call themselves astrologers, they will start telling your future. But the scientist said, isn't it too much? Imagining joining eight stars in the sky, a beautiful girl, or joining 15 stars a lamb. This is imagination. And some also doesn't go around the earth in that manner. But who will listen to that? Million, million, million movie industry. Right? But around 100 years back, when scientists were looking on the sky, they found a fascinating fact. They found sun in one particular year does not pass through 12, but passes through 13 constellations. December 1 to December 19, sun passes through a constellation called Ophiuchus. In Hindi or Bengali, it is called Sharkodhari. The moment we came to know about that, one of my very close personal birthday falls between 1 to 19. December started shouting. I said, what happened? Oh my God, if I open, I don't know the one asked me telegram tomorrow. I will never find how my day will be. Have you ever come across that if your sunshine is Ophiuchus, what your future is? That tells you what a gigantic amount of cheating, a criminal act of cheating goes on in the name of these astrological mumbo jumbos. You should understand astronomy is science, astrology is non science.